Well, hello guys and welcome to another week of School of Life. We're continuing our journey through Isaiah as we look at what God calls in people and this kind of really prophetic book that speaks a lot about Jesus and the church. And we're really excited to be looking at today's passage, which is Isaiah 50 verses 4 to 9. And hopefully you read it a bit beforehand. But before we get into the meat of it, James, would you pray for us as we kick off our conversation? Father, thank you for another opportunity to come together and to open your word and to uh, discuss it with each other. I pray that you would teach us something about yourself today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. Well, today I am joined by Danny, James and John. And John, would you start us off? <laughs> well, it's a very interesting passage. I, I guess it's one of these that could be read at two levels. It's, mm. it's prophetic. It's probably talking about Jesus as the servant, um, but I, 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 I read it, I just felt terribly equipped, actually, mm. by reading it, and I just jotted down some of the things that, that particularly what it, when it said the, the sovereign Lord has, mm. and he instructed me, uh, he, with, with, he, so he give me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary, and I, I really took that, and he opened my ears so I can hear him, mm. and he helps me, and he says that twice. Mm. And who vindic he is the one who vindicates me uh, when he is near. And I just, I, I, I felt very comforted, very, yeah, equipped. And yet seeing something much bigger, mm. you know, uh, that's happening here as well. Mm, I love that. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. Very often for me, I, I have a burden about having the right things to say in, in various contexts, whether it's work or, or socially. And it's really comforting for me to, to read that and to know that I can come to God and, 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 and he can equip me. Um, yeah. And I haven't got to feel as though I've got to have things worked out perfectly. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I love that. And like that verse that you've drawn <clears throat> us to um, says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Mm. And I think one of the things that I love about God and that is so clear and consistent is that he doesn't just give you a gift for yourself. Like it's always for others. It always points yeah. outwards as much as it like helps us and grows us. Um, and I can't help but read that, knowing that this is like a really prophetic thing and it's talking about the Messiah and just hear Jesus in that, yeah. Yeah. Um, that he is the one who sustains the weary. I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's straight out of the gospels. Like he's like, come to me and I'll give you rest. Um, and I think it just, it just makes me want to be someone who doesn't just speak well for the sake of speaking well, but that actually in, in all of the things that I do, that, it, that they wouldn't point back to me, but point back to God yeah. and, and to others, um, which I think is what a lot of this passage is about. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that in terms of um, the gifts that he's given each one of us. Mm. I think for me, it's verse five, the sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I've not been rebellious, I've not turned away. And I think um, it's like a sweet moment as when I became a Christian, him really opening up my ears and just mm. being for the first time when you hear him um and so yeah it's just it's something quite really special in that because um he's had this plan for us all mm. all along yeah so it's just it's the pivotal moments that he, he chooses to kind of come into your life and, and to minister these things I think there's a lot here. It feels as much like lovely and positive as it does quite intense. Yeah. Yep. Um, I yep. gave my back to those who struck yeah. me. I did not hide my face from insult. Yep. And yet he says, the Lord God helps me and I haven't been disgraced. Yeah. Like, like what a tension to mm -hmm. hold. What, mm -hmm. I don't know, it almost feels like those things contradict each other. And yet there's clearly something about his relationship with God that has set whatever his perspective is yeah. in what he encounters. Yeah. 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 And I, I liked at the very end where we land. It's a, it's a sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is He that will condemn me? It's yeah. in my, in in mm. RV. And you, you can echoes later in the Bible with Romans. You know, there is no condemnation. Yeah. You know, and um, the way the Bible fits these all these bits together. You know, because some of this language is. You know, you're not quite sure what he's actually saying. You know, mm. I clothe the sky with darkness before we hit verse four and. And yet it links yeah, with other yeah. parts of the Bible. Yeah, it's really hard to not read this and hear the whole story yeah. of Jesus. Like 
you know, ultimately yeah. what seems to be being described there is kind of the moment of crucifixion, mm. you know, and just yeah. the kind of passage up to it. And and you're almost reminded of Jesus crying out on the mm. cross, like, why yeah. have you forsaken me? Yeah. And yet he says, I haven't been disgraced. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yet he says that God helps him. And I do not doubt that as as complicated a moment as being like let down and mocked and insulted is that there is just a, a gravity and a truth to those words that yeah. i don't think i'll get this side of heaven no. do you know what i mean like yeah. like you have to be in genuine communion with yeah. god to be able to say those yeah. things and, yeah. and mean them with your whole heart yeah. Yeah. um but i certainly i read this and i'm like far set <laughs> like, yeah. like that is the thing i want to grow towards i want to yeah. i want to believe and trust in a god like that Talk about supreme confidence and, you know? and, and yeah, just such a clear understanding of, of it's yeah, who we are, you know, um, and all the things we face in life. Um, you know, you talk about communion with God. If mm. if if that's kind of where we're we're coming from, it, it affects how we navigate everything, you know. Yeah. Um, and then we have that um, assurance and that confidence. You know? Totally, John. One of the things that I get a massive privilege in seeing you do is our workplace ministry yeah. um, and I feel like something that's quite personal and pas- a passion of yours is is people bringing that thing of, of yeah. communion with God yeah. into their places of influence into their yeah. workplaces what yeah. has that looked like for you the, for me the key is trust mm. if you don't trust God with your work it's very hard to trust him with a lot of other things. Wow. And because in our work life, we are confronted with so many pressures, many of which hit us like that. Somebody mm-hmm. says something over the phone and you've got to respond. Unless you know who you are and who you trust, you're likely to play the games that everybody else is playing. Yeah. And they play them better than you anyway. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you'll, you, you, you'll be off course before you know where you are. Um, but sometimes just trusting doesn't look like it. And th- this whole passage is, is written to, if like, to tell us about a Jesus who, who totally, totally has a trust that we will never experience or understand. It's mm. so deep. Mm. Um, and yeah, so I do feel for those who, whose working lives are really quite pressurized and yeah. who put, you know, who either want, they either want to hide away and it says here, I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. And, you know, for most of us in the West, it's just, you know, taunts and, yeah. you know, uh, but it's, it's yeah. nothing really. But we can still find ourselves a bit shy about who we are mm. um, in Christ. Yeah. I find myself reading these passages and just going, these feel like prayer points to me. Mm. Um, it feels like I want to pray to not be rebellious. Yeah. Um, I want to pray that I would have like a deeper faith. Like I, w- I don't know, I see this and I go, it feels so aspirational. I know I can't <laughs> do it in my own strength. Yeah. And so I read this and I'm like, I want this to be my lived reality and my experience of Jesus. Well, guys, we are going to send it back to you in your homes, wherever you're watching this from. And we hope that you have a good conversation as you head into the new day. <laughs>